Fantastic. Oh, hi, everybody, and welcome. We're now live. That was a bit of a surprise. Yet again, it's another surprise because Nia literally uh, just sat down in his chair, ready to be interviewed, ready to have this conversation. I said interview, it's in fact a conversation all about creativity and business, which I found really interesting as a concept. Uh, I come from a creative universe. Um, I talk a lot to people about business, and I think the idea of creativity in business is brilliant. So, introductory song. A quick hello and we're good to go. Welcome to the show, Nibashan. How are you doing? I'm good. I like, can you can you do that again? That was good. A quick hello and we're good to go. Welcome to the show, Nibashan. I need you to record my voicemail on the uh, on the phone. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> right. Um, lovely to meet you. I've never met you before. You pitched up literally a minute ago. So this is completely off the cuff and completely cold. But I do know a little, about it, little bit about you because I looked you up on Google and your brand surf is actually pretty good. Have you got a unique name by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> my my yeah so i think there's only three near bashan are you got to pop it up yeah, yeah I no, think keep, it, only... keep it up keep it up on the screen because uh, everything is you there all the videos yeah. uh, all, there's, all the so there's three of me in the entire world right there's a guy who's if you go near bashan call of duty uh, or one of the video he's uploading video games there's another guy and but then it's not a... another guy it's you that's that's one of the video games that's, that's, yeah. yeah, that's all me yeah that's all me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there's a closet designer in Israel. She she does like interior designing and she's really good at closets. Oh, so there's so three there's, of us. There's two he's and a she. That's right. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. I love that. That's brilliant. Hey, the, second, you know. the second slide is is actually the fact that you've got a lovely little knowledge panel. I think you could develop it a bit more. We need a description in there. We need some more information about you. Yeah. Uh, and on the left-hand side, we can see that you're in the knowledge graph, which is pretty rare in terms of the guests I have on because a lot of them get in to the knowledge, or they get the knowledge panel through the books, but you've actually got these movies which have pushed you into the knowledge graph, uh, although that score of confidence of 17 could be improved. And the next slide is Yeah, I need, I need some the help book. with that. There you with go, the knowledge I did it panel. for you. You can hold the book up now because- Oh, uh, look at I that, sorry, book. premature. And you're yet another person who writes books with incredibly long titles. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really title it. So here's a here's a myth, Jason, that might you know might shock you. This might shock you, right? But uh, authors don't really get to, you know, first time authors at least don't really get to pick, you know, the name of the book or really the subtitle. Oh right, because musicians do. Uh, Led Zeppelin called theirs Led Zepp One, Led Zepp Two, Led Zepp Three, Led Zepp Four, didn't right. they? Right. Yeah, and they should have kept going, but they stopped. Now, if we come back to the second slide, it was your knowledge panel. You're a filmmaker, and you've made I was, book, yeah. Last Call in the Kitchen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was for many, many years. I worked in Hollywood. I had a, a production company. Right, okay. And you chose those titles. I did. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, okay. No comment. Now, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to move on to the topic for today. I actually looked up the book on Amazon. I haven't read it, but what I pulled from it was this, and this I'm interested in the last part. Show, we're going to show you how to use creativity as a decision-making tool. I find that already interesting, but you're going to break it down into four essential sections, which is very structured of you for something that's creative. So the four sections, can we go through them one by one in about 25 minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do it. Um, so the the first thing I think that we need to cover is the concept and the idea and the execution, right? So that's the first milestone you need to learn to become creative. Now I worked in Hollywood as you showed earlier, and I worked in music. I, I recorded albums for you know Rod Stewart and Cypress Hill. And but what as I a learned producer, not as a musician. No, as a as a as an engineer, I was uh, oh, one wow. of the engineers. Yeah, isn't that amazing? I was one of the engineers. I was, you know, started now, when I was fifteen years old. I I would have guessed because one thing engineers all have is a really comfy chair, right? A comfy chair and a good mic, right? Look yeah, because because uh, they 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 sit. I mean, I, I was astonished. I I, I was I was mixing chair. an album, and the the the, the engineer he, he was doing the hi hat. And he right. was just twiddling these buttons and he kept changing things. And you're going, I can't hear a difference. I can't hear any difference at all. Right. And right. I went off to the pub and came back like three or four hours later. Right. And he went, okay, now listen. And he put it all on. And he went, it sounds a billion times better. 
but I could not hear any of the differences between yeah, any it, of the things it, that you did on the individual. It's instrument. an amazing, you know, subtle art, and it takes iteration after iteration after iteration to get, you know, the types of sounds and and the presence that you want. So it, it, what, it's what, what what they have. Sorry, I mean, I because I, I'm now interested in this topic. Um, what what it, it seemed to me is he had this incredible capacity to imagine how that little bit would fit into the overall um, scheme of things. And that's a phenomenal skill to have. It takes a lot of brain power and it takes a lot of creativity to understand how the little pieces build up the whole. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely brilliant. So anyway, back back to topic, uh, creativity in business. I mean, that wasn't 100% off topic. But, um, yeah, well, I, I loved it. Um, anyway, so I learned in those studios doing the hi-hat on a console, <laughs> you know, sitting there watching everyone else, you know, kind of, you know, leave to the bar, uh, Jason, nicely done. <laughs> Spoken like a true, I'm going to say North Londoner, and I'm going to say Arsenal fan. Am I wrong? You're wrong, and you're wrong. Brilliant. Great. I'm so happy. What? what who's your, what's the club? Well, I'm, I'm from Leeds, and I supported Manchester City as a child uh, because what I loved is they were so rubbish. They used to snatch <laughs> defeat I remember. from the jaws of victory. Yeah, you and guys then were they in League Two. Money. Grimsby, Sorry. you guys used to play Grimsby. What are you now? Uh, are you are you back to Leeds? No, I you moved to the Liverpool, and I, I got in a football team called the Bootle Boot Boys, and they had a season ticket, and they used to pass it around the team, so each team member could go to one home match in okay. turn. So I got to go to Anfield an awful lot. So I've been to Anfield more than anywhere. So I'm more of a Liverpool fan now than anything else. Wow. Wow. Leeds is in the Premier now. So that's like a it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a fan of Leeds, to be honest. Uh, wow. but, but I, I come from Leeds, but I didn't actually enjoy living there for my first 18 years. I was gotcha. glad to get away. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, and I'm now French. So I got so far away. I'm now French living. There we go. Life. There, there we go. So anyway, I worked in all these creative fields, right? Let's tie it back. Can, can I just point out something? You're worse than me for not sticking to topic. Oh, are you kidding? I love it. I, really? I follow, I'm an you know, East London West Ham fan. I've been West Ham for my entire life. And we've been super miserable for so long. But I yeah. feel like there's a ray of hope right now. You know, we're in what, 12th place? 12th place for me is like a victory, you know? It's oh, usually yeah. right before getting, it's usually a relegation battle every single year for me, but now we're doing really well for us. 12th is like, I mean, that's like Europe, you know, that's, that's the like best. like winning the league, isn't it? We're going to Wembley, you know what I mean? Right, we're, yeah. we're in 12th, so we're we're doing really good. And so I've been, I've been a West Ham fan my whole life, and, you know, it's been interesting. Uh, following oh, can football. I, can I make another point? Yes, supporting West Ham takes a lot of creative thinking. <laughs> it? You know, it really does. Uh, they're, you know, it's a tough team. It is a tough team to love. But, you know, I, I'm uh, to be honest, Jason, I'm a little embarrassed at how much time, energy, and attention I spend on, you know, soccer, on football. And it is, uh, it is an embarrassing thing. There you go. The, <laughs> the hammers. hammers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I spent a lot of time in recording studios. And right. the thing that I noticed was that some of these people, you know, famous artists, weren't all that different than you or me, Jason. Uh, yep. They weren't. They just had a process of creativity, right? And then I left. I worked in Hollywood for a while. And I noticed that the famous actors, you know, wonderful people we all love, also had a process of creativity, then, you know, I went and ran an advertising agency for many years and had my own businesses. And I noticed that people who were doing really well were creative. So I said, you know what? I, I was a consumer of my own product. I was like, hook me up. There's got to be a video. There's got to be a book. And there wasn't. Right. Every single book and every methodology out there was about the why of creativity. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. I found a hole in the marketplace and I filled it with a book on the how of creativity, right? So back to your four points, there's the concept, the idea, and the execution. That's, That's the first understood. thing you need to learn. <laughs> right, sorry, it's I'm... the first milestone. Sorry. How did you get four, by the way, Jason? You didn't read the book. I read the Amazon blurb. Ah, nicely it says, done, It says sir. four sections. I... Clever. Uh, creative. Creative. 
<laughs> sounds like a lead sounds a little Leeds fan ish. Um, <laughs> okay, so, so are you? Uh, would you say that deducing my book into four sections is pulling a Leeds a little bit? Probably yes. There we go. So in fact, it's actually three. So we're we're looking at three, which makes me feel more comfortable because the friend of mine said <laughs> everything in threes because he teaches A level students, 18, 17, 18 year olds. And he That's says right. if you give them two, they can't get it. If you give them four, they forget one. So you give right. them three, they get it every time. Three is the magic number. So the concept is the largest way to look at your business, product or service. Right. The uh, idea is the middle level, it's like kind of the street view or whatnot. And the execution is the electron microscope view. And Jason, that's where most people spend most of their time and uh, most businesses. I know it. I've done it. You know, I'm not a lofty academic. I don't have office hours on Mondays and Thursdays. I don't pay, you know, uh, I don't lobby the undergraduate department to give me $500 so I can run a test, you know, and 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 say, oh, look, I proved it in the real world. Right, but yeah. I'm, I'm busy actually making money and, and being an entrepreneur and going out there and putting a product and service uh, into the marketplace. So I've deduced creativity into those three channel. And when you are able to break down your product or service into those three things, then you can make and manufacture creativity. I'll give you an example. I did consulting for a, a pizza company in the US, a, a famous uh, delivery company. And I met with them, I said, okay guys, what's the concept? And you know, here's the board. And they're like literally near the concept is pizza. That's what we do. Pizza, pizza, pizza. We love pizza. That's what we do. I said, okay, well, what's the idea? You know, is there kind of a mid-level view? They're like, it's pizza. We deliver pizza. I said, yeah, no, sorry. Okay. The, the mid-level view is then we deliver it. Right. So yeah, yeah. Pizza, exactly. pizza, pizza. Second level view, we deliver, deliver. it. And the third right. level view is using bikes. Right. Yeah. So it, it, it was wild. And you know, we started talking and I said, okay, what's the story here? How did this? And then somebody in the room said, that's a clever graphic, clever. <laughs> somebody in the room said, you know, uh, our, our founder started, you know, 1929 recipe, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, tell me more, tell me more, you know? And they're like, this is, this is ultimate. Somebody said ultimate comfort food. So I'm writing it down. I said, comfort food. Okay, now we're getting to a bigger picture. And then somebody in the room said, you know, Nir, if we're looking at it this way, I got to tell you that I think sustenance is our biggest thing. I was like, wow, okay, cool. That's a big concept, sustenance. Why sustenance? And they, they told me that, you know, people would literally starve, Jason. This is not, not a French type thing. You guys are right. too, you know, but uh, for us here in America, um, you know, there are people who receive a pizza from these, this company, a meal. And they receive one every day, every day they get wow. a delivery. And they literally told me that they're, you know, across the country that people would, wouldn't have dinner. They wouldn't have supper that night if they weren't around. And I, it blew my mind that, you know, that kind of thing happens. Yeah. So basically they've got a captive audience, so they don't need to yeah. do any marketing. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, they, they kind of said, okay, so sustenance, and then maybe comfort food. Sustenance is the concept. Comfort food is the idea. The right. execution is the double stuffed crust, meaty, cheesy. I said, okay, great. What's the problem now? They're like, great. So this is what we're paying you all this money to do, right? We need you to figure out why the double crust meat ain't selling anymore. What's going on? And I said, okay. well, you know, let's go back up to your idea. Let's look at comfort food. And they started to get excited. You could tell there was kind of a weight being lifted off their shoulders because they had the ability to get creative about their product or service when before it was like, you know, pizza, pizza, pizza. So we started to talk and somebody said, you know, calzones are really interesting and maybe we should, it's not a large conversion from the kitchen we have now to getting that product or service out. And you can see the room is just like energizing. I'm writing stuff on the board, so on and so Sorry, forth. Just to interrupt that really quickly. I think we forget that people can get really enthusiastic about their product and what it is they're doing. If you and if you're able to look at it creatively, absolutely. But we're shoved down the line of the analytical view every day, Jason. It's numbers, right. it's spreadsheets, it's how's quarter four doing, and you know, why aren't more of our earnings turning into profit? And how do we maximize? I've gotten calls like this before. To manufacturing companies, we're trying to maximize 0.0002% of a particular piece of machinery. 
you know, and, and that's like so far in the execution that I'm like, guys, what's the idea here? They're like, the idea is to make more money near. I'm like, no, that's not the idea. You didn't start this company to make money. Y'all could be doing a lot of more and different things and you'd be making more money. And as soon as I say that, people are like, yeah, he's right. I could totally make more money than I'm making now doing something else. So I'm like, why are you doing it? So Jason, D the DNA of humankind is creativity. That is what has got us to where we are surviving, you know, 20, 40, 60,000 years. We were able to become creative. I talk about Harriet in my book. She's the world's first creative person. And she was being attacked by a beast. She was able to take a stick that n nobody ever saw as anything but a walking stick. And she took an arrowhead that was just a berry picker. And she put the, 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 the arrowhead on the stick and was able to fight off the beast and then, you know, survive. That, that, that is a story. It's a really good story. But the probability that it's actually true is quite small because there isn't any recorded history from that period. Right. But, but I, you know, it's, uh, it's a good story. You, I love the what story. What are you, a Leafs story. fan? What, what is this? Like, what are we nitpicking here? <laughs> what, what's going on? What's going on, No, no, Jason? no. You, you just told me 100%. Slam so it she... right back in my face. 100% you're right. <laughs> And then, you know, she, she kind of ran to the village afterwards and shared it. And so that, that sense and that excitement um, that has kept us alive, I feel, has led us to, you know, a place where we are today, which is we have that in it in us, um, but we choose to be analytical because we don't want to be laughed at. We think, oh, it's more serious to be, hmm. you know, look at my spreadsheet, look at these pivots on the Excel, and look at me. I'm so, you know, analytical and mature. The problem is, is that our brains are split into two hemispheres. Yeah, there's crossover, but part yeah. of it is creative and part of it is analytical. And we've turned up the volume on the analytical and turned down the volume on the creative. Well, I'm going to come into something now, chess, which is something I used to play when I was younger, is considered to be an analytical game. Uh, and we learn to play it by analyzing. And I learned, I mean, I've got six stages of chess, which I'll explain one day. It's too boring for right now. But basically, I got to the stage five, which was being able to calculate 20 moves ahead. It was a bit, wow. like, like, it was a bit like a computer. And, uh, and then I played a guy... Uh, an international master in London. He was playing 20 matches at once and he just went around the table. Wow. And he ha we had the whole time he went around the table to think of our move. And he would just turn up and he would move it. And what, what struck me is he beat 18 people, drew with one and lost to one. And he beat me completely, 100%. And I gave up after that. I just thought there's no point. Because what I realized is he was being creative and artistic appreciation of the 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 board and it was this creativity and the appreciation it was obviously experience it was obviously all the stuff he'd learned over the years but it was also when you say to him why did you make that movie he said because it feels right yes, uh, yes. and that, that was the day you thought okay forget chess because i'm not i'm, I'm always going to be an analytical analytical person so then i went and joined a punk band and became creative which is there like you go. <laughs> I'm yeah, so it, glad I did. And I think letting that creativity out and it, allowing yourself to chuck yourself out there. Yeah, is it's really important. about it's it's listening to that core of who you are. And when I was in that room with those pizza people, um, you know, for, <laughs> for several months. And I yes, was in the room with the pizza people for several months. Do you realize yes. what you just said? That sounds yeah. like you were locked in a room with a, with with people Torture. made out of Horrible. pizza for several Horrible. months. Horrible. It was actually really good. We we ate every single one of their products over and over again. Right. Every lunch was catered by. Anyway, um, the, the point is that once you're able to tap into the DNA of who somebody is, then creativity starts to come out in a way that is a market differentiator. So the way that they practice creativity is not going to be the same way that another company does it. It is so embedded in who we are and how we operate that there's no two, you know, creativity expressions that will ever be the same. It's why, you know, uh, one guitar player sounds different than another guitar player. Mm. It's why Elon Musk is completely different than Steve Jobs, right? So every single creativity manifestation will take on its own identity. And what this company ended up doing was diversifying a new product and innovating by tapping into the core of who they are as a brand. And, and I think that's a cool thing. That's brilliant. Yeah, sorry, absolutely wonderful. Now, the question that just occurred to me as you were talking was my unique selling point 
is likely to be something creative because the only way I can differentiate myself from the competition is by presenting something a little bit different that the others don't do. And therefore, a new USP is by definition a creative element or it doesn't work. Is that fair? Correct. Yes, sir. And that starts within you. Uh, you know, I talk about 92 tools in the book. Every single one of them, Jason, costs nothing. It's free. Every single one of them. It's about shifting your mindset and learning to let go of the baggage and the chains of analytics and starting to embrace that creativity, that DNA that is within us, that is kind of guiding us to where we need to go. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. And now I've got another question. Uh, I used to work with a, with a guy and he used to come in with five ideas every day right. and uh, then say, right, do it. And I said, but I've got 20 ideas every day that are just as good as your idea. And you're asking me to execute your ideas instead of actually picking one of my ideas uh, and executing them. Right. And your and, ideas were better. Well, um, th whether it was better or not, isn't, it, for me, isn't the case. He just could not execute. Right. And he would not execute. And what reminded that reminded me is the Monty Python story is um, John Cleese was saying the problem with the Monty Python is they all had brilliant ideas, but nobody actually there to put it into production. Right. And he was the one who did that all the time. Now, you have that creativity, which is great. But then if you have that creativity with no production behind it, without anybody to actually execute and do that detail that you were talking about earlier on, it's dead in the water. Right. So so here, here's the thing. Right, I did a keynote right before COVID hit, I'm going to say now this was February right. to a real estate group. And, you know, I, I did the whole thing and it was kind of a cool spiel. It's a, it's a business person giving a spiel, uh, you know, not, you know, uh, uh, a guy with, you know, yeah. who lost the, the use of his arm and now is, you know, a professional arm wrestler. I'm not that guy. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I talk about practical things that people can use. And so, you know, I usually get excited um, audience members who come up after. And I, there was a woman in, you know, a couple of rows back and I could see I was doing my thing. And she, you know, just like so excited. <laughs> I was like, OK, cool. This person's going to come up after. And she comes up after Jason and she goes, Near, this is this is really great. I have a million ideas. I have this idea and I have that idea. And and and, and like I how do I choose and, and what do I then, how do I produce these ideas? I have so many ideas. I need a big staff near, I need more people. I only have 20 people. I have a real estate group in the Southeast or whatever, wherever she was. I need more people. Right, right, right. And I was like, okay, time out. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's look at your ideas and just give me a couple of them. She's like, no problem. Listen to this. Look, look how creative I am the listing. We need to blah, 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 and change the thing. And then on the listing, I'd like to do this. And then when we go to a house on the particular listing, I like to, so what she really had, Jason, was, was a lots bunch, of like details, a bunch of executions. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right, yeah, and, yeah. and a bunch of executions is where most people think creativity lies, but it's not. That's right. not coming up with new ideas. That's just simply shavings and really yeah. Thin, thinly veiled differentiators between one idea and another. That's meat lovers cheesy double crust pizza with meat lovers cheesy one crust pizza. Right. No. 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 Hundred percent. Yeah. Absolutely. And that that kind of comes to to another question for me, which is like let let's say let let's imagine she had three big ideas. How does she choose? Once she's chosen, she has to stick to it. Is that? fair because i mean the, the problem with we don't really have enough time to do all the things we would want to do or the resources to do it and and so you've got that problem as you're saying i've got these three ideas which one do i go for so it really is an issue of choosing the particular path that makes the most sense to you now i talk about a ice cream salesman from many years ago who wanted to sell a bunch of ice cream machines your and diet he, is is pizza and ice cream isn't it come on man i'm hungry <laughs> <laughs> and so his his approach, <laughs> yeah, his approach was analytical, right? And, you know, I'm going to volume, volume. I'm going to get a bunch of leads. So he worked the phone, did all this stuff. And like any business, it grew. But then it it, it kind of, it flatlined for a while, like right. every business um, that doesn't get creative. And so he was trying to figure out, okay, you know, what what's going on? And he noticed there was a restaurant in Los Angeles or, or Orange County, I can't remember, that kept ordering machines. And so he went down there and that's a creative idea. You know, that's not an analytical construct. Let's check it out. 
created. Yeah. Went down there, saw there was a line out the door, you know, 45 minutes, an hour he waited. And then he got to the front of the line, had the best cheeseburger he's ever had in his life, Jason. And that guy's name was Ray Kroc. And the restaurant was McDonald's. So right. had he have chosen to that, you know, one idea, I got the best idea. I'm going to stick to that. You know, it's ice cream machine salesmen and volumes and this kind of thing. He wouldn't have seen creatively where the little victory was taking him. And so I urge your listeners who are sitting here with three big ideas. Now, one, I doubt that they have three big ideas unless they read my book and really know how to get <laughs> ideas extracted into a, a bigger uh, a scheme. I've done this talk, uh, you know, many, many times. And I don't think I've had one person who kind of came up to me after a lecture or whatnot, who had, you know, a real concept, most of them are idea level, which is amazing because it enabled you to work on your business and not in your business, which is, you know, a, a great first step. But anyway, so, you know, had he have stuck to selling ice cream machines, who knows, but he, he listened to those little victory. So but my advice to your listeners who are trying to decide, I've got some really good ideas. Which one do I pick? You got to listen to yourself. Don't hire me. I'm not going to tell you who to or what to do it's got to come from you because you know at a certain point i leave right the lights turn off and it's you alone deciding what it is that you want to do you have yeah. to decide into what makes sense to you yeah and what you're willing to spend the rest of your life doing i mean it's like getting married you don't get married to somebody you're not going to be i don't get the to... elephants three uh, i think because of the memory but that you have to know anton to Clever. get that one i think Clever. um so uh, w one thing that strikes me there is part of the creativity is also to be flexible in terms of kind of where you're going and realize when the idea that you're currently working on could be adapted or changed. Yes. Uh, move into new territory. Flexibility is essential, especially if you're born in Leeds, you follow Leeds for a little while, then city, and then you switch over to Liverpool. That's, you know, that's a big, th those are, those are flexible, uh, following rules that a way, lot of flexibility yes 100 um, percent. I, I actually have a good reason for all three switches but we won't go into that um <laughs> but i mean one thing one thing that that kind of is interesting i mean it, my, my idea and i'm going to bring it back to what i'm doing which is brand steps what appears when somebody searches your brand name which is why i start with that on every episode yeah. um and as far as i know i'm the only uh digital marketer who's actually looking at that so it's an cool. original idea i yeah. mean original just in the sense that I'm focused on it and obsessed by it and everyone else thinks it's all right wrong. a lot of people think it's just a small part of digital marketing now, I'm saying my creative idea is saying it's actually phenomenally important it's an amazing insight into your content strategy the digital ecosystem what Google thinks the world thinks about you learn it's a great way to learn SEO and it tell and it's also incredible it's your business card it's what people see when they search your brand name and the people who search your brand name are the people who are the most important to your business and so kind of it's this it's this kind of whole thing yes sir sure. um, and what I've noticed over the last seven years that I've been doing it is that I've had to adapt the approach. Okay. Because my initial approach was just it's your business card and actually it goes a lot further than that. And being flexible about saying, actually, I'm not going to just stick to that uh, has been has been really interesting. And, and sorry, that's coming. The reason I'm talking about it is saying it's an idea I'm willing to spend the rest of my life doing because it's so interesting and I love it so much. You, you need to have something within you that drives you to do what you're doing every day. And when you have that in you, you're listening to kind of the creative side of your mind, of your, your being. And, you know, every day then becomes uh, pleasurable. It doesn't become work. And so I could tell by that smile that, you know, south of France chateau that you're in now, that you are deeply a man of, uh, of happiness right yes you're not you're almost a mind reader in fact the smile was this is the sentence that closes the episode because it was absolutely perfect so oh there you go it hasn't closed the episode it's going to keep going we're now ranking number two for your name that happens every week every time we on youtube when we're streaming live uh youtube pushes right up the rankings and we manage what's to with the russian that's because uh, the, the guy doing the, the image things and the screen flashes is uh, Russian. Oh, huh, there we go. Ah, international. International show. Look at you. Look at <laughs> you. you. believe it? France, England. Brilliant stuff. 
Russia, look at you. World I, class. I, I, I thought I would really enjoy this episode, and I really did enjoy this episode because I love the idea of creativity and applying it to business. And we went through football to uh, pizzas to ice cream uh, to Monty Python. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Next week, for anybody who's watching, we've got uh, Barnaby Winter, who's the brand bucket man, which is also interesting. I'm interested in hearing about what the brand bucket is. Um, and it's how to go become the go-to brand in your market. He's a really lovely chap too. Do join us. Nir, thank you very much. You get the outro song. A quick goodbye to end the show. Thank you, Nir. Thanks, Shane.